What's up, YouTube? We're going to talk about the Thomas Mantle story in Kentucky, United States, okay? It's a summary of, um, you know, what happened, and then I'm going to um, talk about, you know, the details and things like that. Then I'm going to say my opinion and, and all of this other stuff, and we just going to get to it. In the comment section, I want y'all to let me know what y'all thinking, and, you know, just let me know what y'all thoughts on the alien, um, you know, sightings and and things like that. I should say UFO sightings, not alien sightings, sorry. <laughs> I was about to watch an alien movie, that's why. But anyways, we're going to definitely um, talk about this. And uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel, man. Um, we just started doing alien stuff. And uh, I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, talk about the truth. Anyways, it happened in um, January the 7th, 1948. Okay, Thomas Mantle. Alright. <laughs> The Mantle UFO incident was among the most publicized early UFO reports. The incident resulted in the crash and death of 25-year-old Kentucky Air National Guard pilot Captain Thomas F. Mantle on um, January 7, 1948 while in pursuit of a UFO. Okay. Historian David M. Jacobs argues the Mantle case marked a, sh a sharp shift in both public and governmental perceptions of UFOs. Previously, the news media often treated UFO reports with a whimsical or glib attitude reserved for silly season news. Following Mantle's death, however, Jacobs notes, The fact that a person had died in an encounter with an alleged flying saucer, dramatic <laughs> flying saucer dramatically increased public concern about the phenomenon. Now a dramatic new prospect and their thought about UFOs. They might be not only extraterrestrial, but potentially hostile as well. Meaning they ready to beat a nigga ass. But anyway. <laughs> However, later investigation by the UF Air Force's Project Blue Book indicated that Manu may have died chasing a skyhook balloon. Which in 1948 was a top secret project that Mantu would not have known about. Okay. Here's a little overview of, you know, what, what happened and stuff. Mantle was an experienced pilot. His flight history consisted of 2,167 hours in the air, and he had been honored for his part in the Battle of Normandy during World War II. That's an accomplishment. On January 7, 1948, Gallman Field at Fort, Na at Fort Knox, Kentucky, received a report from the Kentucky Highway Patrol of an unusual aerial object near Madisonville, Kentucky. Reports of a westbound circular object 250 to 300 feet, 80 to 90 uh, meters in diameter were received from Owensboro and Irvington. Sorry, Irvington. <laughs> At about 1.45 p.m., Sergeant Quentin Blackwell saw an object from his position in the control tower at Fort Knox. Two other witnesses in the tower also reported a white object in the distance. Colonel Guy Hicks the base commander reported an object he described as very white. Observers at Clinton County Army Airfield in Ohio described the object as having an appearance as having the appearance of a flaming red cone trailing a gaseous green mist. <sighs> That's crazy. And, uh, and observed the object for around 35 minutes. Another observer at Lockbourne Army Airfield in Ohio noted just before leaving, it came it came to very near the ground, staying for about 10 seconds, then climbed up at a very fast uh, rate to its original altitude, 10,000 feet, leveling off and disappearing into the overcast, heading 120 degrees. Its speed was greater than 500 miles per hour in level flight. That's crazy. You know how fast that is? You know how fast that is? That's like... Nigga... <laughs> that's crazy. Four F-51D Mustangs of Sea Flight, 165th Flight of Quadron, Kentucky Air National Guard, already in the air, one piloted by Mantle, were told to approach the object. Blackwell was in radio communication with the pilots throughout the event. One pilot's Mustang was low on fuel, and he quickly returned to the base. Air Force Captain Edward J. Ruppert, the head of the Project Blue Book, notes that there was some disagreement amongst the air traffic controllers as to Mantle's word as he communicated with the tower. Some sources reported that Mantle had described an object which looks metallic and of tremendous size, but according to Ruppert, to Ruppert 
Others disputed whether or not Mantle actually said this. That's crazy. That's crazy. That is crazy, bro. That is insane. <laughs> nah, but for real, that's crazy. Wow. Fireman later pulled Mantle's body from the Mustang's wreckage. His seatbelt was shredded, and his wristwatch had stopped at 3.18 p.m. The time of his crash, meanwhile, by 3.50 p.m., the UFO was no longer visible to observers at Godman Field. The Mantle incident was reported by newspapers around the world and received significant news media attention. A number of sensational rumors were also speculated, I mean circulated about Mantle's crash. According to UFO historian Curtis Peebles, among the rumors that were claimed the flying saucer was a Soviet missile, it was an alien spacecraft that shot down Mantle's flighter, fighter when it got too close. Captain Mantle's body was found riddled with bullets. The body was missing. The plane, <clears throat> sorry, the plane had completely disintegrated in the air and the wreckage was radioactive. However, no evidence has ever surfaced <clears throat> to substantiate any of these claims and Air Force investigations specifically refuted some claims such as the supposedly radioactive wreckage. Now, the reason why I say this kind of some bullshit is because, <clears throat> not bullshit as in like not real, it's definitely real. But the reason why I'm saying that them covering it up and saying that it happened by some other type of, you know, way, that's bullshit. Because it's been known that UFO ships, they actually are radioactive. Like, they fucking turn, like, really red. Like, fire looks like kind of like fire or something. Or, like, fucking, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not fire, but, like, you know what I mean? And it's, like, really radioactive. And, um, like, one of the stories that um, that I talked about before, I don't know if a lot of people, you know, saw it or not. But, um, you know, they was talking about pretty much um, something was thrown at, um, at a lady or something like that. I think she was recording, like, the uh, UFO or something like that. Next thing you know, this fucking, um, it was like... I can't explain it. Like, it wasn't fire. It was some type of, like, metal. But it was it was metal that, that like, burns you. And gives you, like, severe, like, severe burns. Like, third-degree burns. Like, it's crazy. It's hard to explain. <laughs> I'm going to have to find a video because I think I said that wrong for sure. <laughs> I know I said that wrong. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. That's it about this manual UFO incident, though. <clears throat> um, we're going to be talking about a lot of alien stuff coming up. And, um... This was just one topic. Unfortunately, you know, Captain Thomas F. Mantle, you know, he died. He was only 25 years old. Kentucky Air National Guard pursuing a UFO. Got too close. And I guess that the UFO ship was like, you know, y'all cool from a distance, but as soon as you get that close, I'm going to have to do you. Damn. That's crazy, though, man. It's crazy, though. Let me know what y'all think about the Mantle UFO incident. <laughs> Let me know if y'all believe it or if y'all think it's bullshit. Let me know in the comment section. And um, we're going to be back with some more.